they try to find one or two units that will do it all and such units simply don't exist. I got a comment from a subscriber in one of the SSL Fusion versus plugin videos that kind of inspired this video, which we'll call Analog Gear for Beginners. And this could actually be a mini video series if you guys are interested, because on the channel, we kind of talk always about advanced things and techniques. But there's a lot of beginners that follow the channel. So if you do have questions about how to enter the analog world and you are at the beginning leave your questions in the comments down below and we'll see in this video i'm gonna peel the very very first layer and hopefully clarify some confusion about analog mixing hybrid mixing and mastering let's go What if you could use the power of your video card to run audio plugins? Well, with GPU Audio, now you can. GPU Audio is the first startup dedicated to utilizing the power of your GPU for audio processing. Real-time GPU Audio processing was fantasy until now due to latency with parallelization and the inherent differences between GPU and CPU. GPU Audio opens doors for a new generation of audio plugins, software, and even cloud-based platforms, tens or even hundred times more powerful than what exists right now. A complete audio plugin suite will be released in the next weeks and soon third-party plugins. But you can try GPU Audio right now on your computer and get their free Fair Convolution Reverb. Simply sign up to the Early Access program at earlyaccess.gpu.audio or click the link in the info box down below. All right, I'm gonna post a full comment here just for context, but like I said, I'm only interested in one part of it. The subscriber is talking about the SSL Fusion hardware, and among other things, he says, half the features aren't even usable for mastering or up to mastering standards. The compressor falls short also, especially compared to other mastering compressors. Still having a difficult time justifying owning this unit especially for mastering. So the very first thing to clarify when he says the compressors fall short also, especially compared to other mastering compressors, I definitely agree that the compressor on the Fusion falls short because the Fusion doesn't have a compressor. <laughs> but the part that inspired this video, and maybe I'm reading uh, the subscriber wrong, but it doesn't matter because I know many people see that way is when he says, I can justify owning this unit for mastering. And of course, justifying owning a unit or not is all about context, right? I said this many, many times. If you do this for a living, this being, being a mix and mastering engineer, and that's how you pay your bills, that's your job, then it's a simple investment and simple math, right? Do I make money doing this? And will this unit make my work better, my results better, and save me time and all that? Will I repay my investment soon enough? All these things is basically how professionals decide whether or not they're gonna invest in analog gear or anything else, a plugin or monitors, anything else. If you're not a professional, then it's pretty much the same as deciding, do I want that $500 pair of sneakers or not? It's, it's exactly the same, because it's not gonna make you money, it's not gonna you know, do anything for you financially, okay? It's just something either you want, you have passion for, maybe you are a musician, maybe you are an inspiring engineer, and you want you know, to put up your portfolio, and you want your portfolio to be better and better and better. So even if you are not making money right now, that's an investment that you could consider to make your products better. But if you're not even an inspiring engineer, and maybe you're a musician, and you mix and master your own stuff out of necessity because you, you literally don't have the money to pay a professional to do it and you just want to release your songs, then I wouldn't even worry about it. it. This is something I talked about in my famous video about analog versus digital. And you just want to release your songs the best you can with the tools that you have. Just don't even worry about it. So that's the first thing. Context is everything when we talk about these things. But the next part is the most important and what I would like to clarify. I feel that many inspiring engineers uh, that are just starting to even look at hardware, they try to find one or two units that will do it all, that will do it all every single time, 
and ideally they, they don't even have to tweak that much and such units simply don't exist. They don't. That's why we have walls of gear <laughs> because aside, I want to say probably a handful of units. So probably this many and not even there's no universally good sounding unit that will no doubt work on every single song, whether you only work on your own stuff, even more if you have clients that send you different genres or even the same genres. Every song is different. And not just because I have all these pieces of gear, that means that I use them all, all the time. So I understand 100%, okay? Not many people have the budget when they start to just buy everything <laughs> they could possibly need if, to do this job. It's unrealistic. Maybe few lucky people do, but I also think that that's not the right way to do it because probably those people are just gonna buy everything that is popular because unless they have experience already, they just don't even know how to use it or how to combine them. So they're just gonna buy what's popular and then probably realize, oh, this doesn't work for my style or this doesn't do what I thought it was doing. So I think actually buying gear a little by little it's so much better because you get to learn your units, first of all, which takes time. It takes a lot of time and a lot of practice to even learn one unit. That's why people pay professionals. It's not because we have the toys. It's because we've been using the toys for a long time and we try them and try different combinations, different settings, different routings, different levels, different anything on a large variety of material. That, of course, and your ears, your taste, and your listening environment and everything else. But besides the point. So when we look at a unit, for example, the Fusion, uh, which is a combination of different modules, don't expect that unit to be the ticket every single time or even each individual module to be needed on a given song. And everybody with a little bit of experience know this. When I buy a unit, I don't expect that unit to be on every single mix or master that I do. And that way I feel the money that I spent are worth it. Of course, if you buy a unit and then you realize after a year and a half that has been sitting there collecting dust because maybe it was cool at the beginning when you first try it, right? But you misjudged and misevaluate the unit. And then when you start using it in real life for clients, you realize that either you don't use it or you prefer something else that you have and it's collecting dust. At that point, you might want to sell the unit, okay? And it, this happens, this happens to everybody. And also happens that you, you change your chain and something that you used to use seven times out of 10 Maybe now you start using it less and less and less. You might want to consider getting rid of it. But that's also not true because you know what? I have a couple of units that I literally maybe use once every 10 or 15 masters or mixes. But you know what? I keep it because when I need that unit, that sound, that trick, whatever that is, nothing else gives me that result. So again, it's a fine line, it's a balance, but it happens also that you keep just one unit because it has that one trick that when you need that, nothing else does it. So when we talk about justifying buying, spending money on a unit or where, when people ask me like, hey, I'm, I'm interested in buying this piece of gear, what do you think? Uh, would it do it for me? It's always a really, really hard question to answer. And that's why I always tell like, maybe you should get a private consultation and talk about it, you know, so I understand better what you're looking for, what your expectations are, and what's your style, what's your, what are your needs, and that, and that way I can tell you, you know, if that unit would be the best choice or worth having for you. But this is the reason why we have 15 compressors and 10 EQs and five saturators, because no unit works on every single project every time. For example, let's take the Fusion since the comment was posted on a video regarding that. He thinks that the Fusion is not up to par for mastering, which would be a whole different discussion because many times the differences between, uh, let's say, uh, two equalizer, right? The mixed version and the mastering version. The only difference really is the recallability of the mastering versus the mixing version. So switches instead of pots 
or slightly lower noise floor. And in many cases with modern gear, that doesn't happen anymore either. So when we talk about mastering grade, it, it's more like, for example, for converters, okay? And something like that. Especially when we talk about color boxes and very colored unit, that's, it, there's, no, there's really no such a thing as mastering grade or not. Let me give you another example, a unit that you guys all loved when I posted the video, the Analog Design Black Box HG2. It's an absolutely amazing unit. I love it to death, but does it make all the mixes and all the masters? No, absolutely not. It's a very specific unit. It's, it's not a one trick pony, but is a one type of sound unit. Within the range that it has, it has many sounds and it's actually very uh, versatile for being what? For being a tube saturator. It's probably the most versatile tube saturator analog that is out there, but it doesn't make all the masters and it doesn't make all the mixes because it's a specific sound. It's a specific collection of sounds, okay? Because you have many possibilities. Is it worth having? 100% for me, because when I do use it, nothing touches it. So this video is about this kind of mindset, not only being able to assess yourself whether or not it's worth spending money on a, a given piece of gear, but your expectations. Do not expect to buy something and that something will, first of all, make your mix sound amazing or your master sound amazing by itself. You need to, first of all, learn how to use it and it takes time. I mean, the more experienced you are, the shorter the learning curve is. For example, for me to learn how to use the HT2 was probably three days. But if you're not experienced, it could take you a good six, seven months. And I always advise people when you buy a new unit and you're not experienced, don't try to push it in your project at any cost because you spent the money and you feel like now you have to pay me back, giving me like a good sound every time, because it doesn't work that way. And a lot of people ruin mixes that way until they understand, oh shit, you know, the mix that I did last year with this one, now I understand I shouldn't have used it, you know? So this also happens. And also understand that when you look at the analog world, it's a very expensive game. It's more expensive than many people think when you start adding things because your chain is only as strong as your weakest link. If you have one weak link, that is your ceiling. That is how good your entire analog chain is gonna be. Of course, there are ways, for example, in home studio to do smart purchases. A specialty unit, like for example, the HG2, doesn't make much sense in a home studio. The SPL Master EQ, it doesn't really make much sense in a home studio. When you're looking at the analog world, there are ways to just build a very budget conscious chain for your two bus which is always where everybody starts, rightfully so, because it, it gives you the more impact and the more result, the more analog vibe uh, on your mixes, on your masters, with a reasonable budget. Because when you start going into single channel for a full mix like I have, of course, the, the costs just skyrocket because you need a ton of high quality ADDA channels, a lot of inputs and outputs. You need something to manage all the hardware. You need all your units to be in the same ballpark quality at least. So again, at that point, you just think as a businessman. If it's your passion, of course, by all means, uh, you will have all my respect if you actually buy gear because you want to make your music the best you can and you enjoy working with analog. I mean, we spend money on stupid shit all the time. Like, look at me and the money I spend on my car. But yes, this is basically the video. I think it's more to tell people have the right expectation when you look at a piece of gear doesn't matter how fantastic it looks on paper. And understand that even with a basic setup, it's kind of expensive for, for most people. But that's also why people hire people like me. And that's why we have so many different pieces of gear. And I think this is the video. If you guys have questions, let's say analog for beginners, uh, leave it in the comment down below. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Please consider using the super thanks if the videos are helping you stay safe. See you next time.